Look what the Lord has done. Look what he's done in your life. Just take a moment to reflect on what he's done in your life. Where he's brought you from, what he's delivered you from. Just focus on who you are now. Look what the Lord has done.
of God's power in the house this morning. I believe you. I believe you this morning. I have heard testimonies even this morning about how good and powerful our God is. Whatever situations, if you're here this morning, if there's something in your life, let me encourage you that God is the answer. God is not a answer. God is not a part of the equation. God is the answer this morning. He is the healer, the savior, the protector. Come on, he is our source and our provision this morning. Whatever it is, Jesus is your answer this morning. Amen, amen. All right, y'all getting crazy up in here. Y'all go back to your seats. Praise God. Y'all too busy having church. Y'all are interrupting church this morning. Whoo, praise God. Praise God. Welcome to the church triumphant. Just in case you don't know where you are this morning. Praise God. At the church triumphant, we honor God. We love people. And we know that God is going to help us transform the world for Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. If you are a guest here this morning, thank you, thank you, thank you for choosing to be with us. We are so glad that you made us a part of your Sunday morning. And we hope that by now, you already feel like you're at home. And if not, give us five more minutes and you'll feel like you're at home. Amen? Amen. If you're a guest here, we've got this guest center in the back. It's a great place to go to find out more about the church triumphant. And it's a place where hopefully we can connect with you and find out more about you because we are so happy that you chose to be with us today. All those watching online, thank you. Thank you for watching us online as well. At the church triumphant, we believe in the promise of transformation. In John chapter 3, Jesus had that promise on his mind. Nicodemus came to him and Nicodemus said, I know that you are sent from God because no one can do the things you do unless God is with them. In that moment, Jesus had Nicodemus' rapt attention. He could say anything he wanted in that moment and Nicodemus would receive it. And he said, a man must be born again he said that flesh and blood cannot see the kingdom of God. You must be born again. Of all the things he said, he could say, he said, you have to be born again. And Nicodemus heard that phrase, maybe even in some way some of you are hearing this phrase this morning. I have no idea what you're talking about. Born again? How is that possible? And Jesus said, that which is flesh is flesh, but that which is spirit is spirit. He said, you must be born of the water and the spirit. See, flesh and blood, this, this flesh that we're born into, it cannot inherit the kingdom of God. So there has to be a spiritual birth to go alongside that physical birth. Nicodemus wasn't 100% sure, 100 sure what he was talking about, but... Today, I can say that that spiritual birth was first experienced on the day of Pentecost when the Holy Ghost was poured out 
on 120 in that upper room. And when the multitudes came and said, what do we need to do? Just as Nicodemus was asking, what is it, God? Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. That promise, Acts chapter, nine, uh, ch chapter 2, verse 39 says, For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all them that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. That means the promise is for every generation. The promise is for every nation. The promise is for everyone under the sound of my voice this morning. This promise is for you. The new birth is the promise of transformation. If, you, or if you're here this morning and you have not yet been baptized, then you don't want to leave here without being baptized in the name of Jesus. And this amazing couple, the Smiths, my friends, amen. They're going to be over here by this sign that says baptism. You can go now. You don't have to wait. This isn't one of those fancy churches where you got to wait for a special call. If you want to be baptized, you get baptized now. If you want to get baptized later, you get baptized later. When you're ready, we're ready. Amen? Amen. That promise of transformation has always been a part of this church right here. 1030 Strawberry Road has always been a place of transformation. And a big part of that transformation was a man named Arliss Glass, our bishop. Yesterday marked the one-year anniversary of his passing. And I think several of us, many of us, most of us, marked it in remembering this mighty man of God. But I just wanted to take a brief moment this morning before we go on with the rest of our service to pause and to honor this man for the legacy that he left us with here at the Church Triumphant. Bishop Glass, his fingerprints are on everything that we do. You know, and as we go on, the day may come where his boots aren't sitting up here on the front row because thank God we're growing and we're going to need the space. But even if those boots aren't sitting there, you can guarantee his fingerprints will never leave. He will always be a part of what we're doing and what, what Brother Cisco and Sister Kimberly and what the lead team does, what all of us do each and every day, Bishop will always be a part of that. And Sister Glass, I just want to tell you, we love you, we're praying for you, and we're so thankful that you chose to continue to be a part of us here. We're so happy that you, that you chose to stay here with us. I know your family wants you to go stay with them, and that's fine, they can want, but we're happy to have you right here with us. Amen. Love you all. I invite you to turn your attention to the screen for a few brief announcements. Welcome to the Church Triumphant. We are so happy that you chose to be with us in service today. We would be honored if you would join us after service in the back of the sanctuary at our guest center. That's a place where you can find out more about us and, and we would love to find out more about you. At the Church Triumphant, it is our vision to honor God, love people, and transform the world. We, we strive to honor God every day through our actions, our attitudes, and the choices that we make. We strive to love people to the best that we can because we know that when we do, we will transform our world for Jesus Christ. Transformation, it's at the very heart of the gospel and it's in everything that we do here. However you came in today, you don't have to leave the same way. You can be transformed. We're so excited to have you with us. Thanks again for joining us at the Church Triumph. Here at the Church Triumphant, we want to stay connected with you. And here's a great way through our Connect card. 
You should have received one when you walked in the door today. But if you didn't, if you'll raise your hand right now, our usher team is walking through the sanctuary and would love to give you one. You can open this up inside. It tells a little bit about what we believe and different ways that you can be involved at the Church Triumphant. The back has a note section, so you can take notes during our sermon today. There's also this great portion right here, the Connect card. This is how we get your up-to-date information, and we also receive your prayer requests, which our team will pray over every week. If you have no change in your address and you're not a first-time guest, then you can just write NC. Whenever it comes time for our portion of worship through offering and tithes, you can simply rip this off and drop it into the offering containers. Thank you so much for joining us today. Hi, ladies. This is your invitation to Saturday, May 4th, Ladies' Day. We're going to gather around the table together for eight breakout sessions. You are going to enjoy hearing topics such as teach me to pray, studying God's word, calling and career, purpose, calling, and relationships. We'll have a special session for moms of littles, moms of tweens, teens, and beyond. We'll also have a session on soul winning and how to teach a Bible study. Then we'll have a special session for prayers and resources for prodigals that will be taught by Sister Diane Long. You'll be able to choose two out of the eight when you register. At noon, we'll come together in the sanctuary for a very special time of worship and the word. Sister Dia Adams will be with us and she's gonna be speaking on prayer and intimacy with God. This is a special event for all ladies ages 12 and up. So you can register today on the app, on the website, and at the back of the church if you're here on a Sunday or Wednesday. And we look forward to seeing you for this special day together, around the table together. We'll see you then. Bye-bye. I want to cordially invite all of our ladies to Ladies' Day 2024 here at the Church Triumphant on Sunday, May the 12th at 11 a.m. This day is a very special day because it is gonna incorporate every lady at every stage of life. So if you are a sister, an aunt, a spiritual mother, a mentor, or a biological mom, I want you to know that we want you to be here. This day is going to empower you to be the woman of God that He intended for you to be. You play such an important part of this church and of the kingdom of God, and so we want to pour back into you. God has been faithful through it all. He has been faithful through the ages. So join us Sunday, May the 12th. If you're a first-time guest at the Church Triumphant, thank you for being with us today. We're so honored you chose to worship here. We ask that you stop by our Cafe 1030 right off the foyer where we have a special gift just for you. It's a short Bible study called Beyond Belief that will help you dig deeper in your faith and draw closer to God. We also invite you to choose a complimentary, delicious cup of coffee, a latte, or a fresh bakery item. We're so glad you're here. For more information, you can connect online at triumphtoday.org or you can download our church app. We pray you enjoy the rest of the service and welcome home. So discipleship for us uh, has been an amazing experience. Um, you know, when we first joined, we had uh, just suffered a tragic loss in our family. Um, and this um, joining discipleship was exactly what we needed uh, from the, the course material, the uh, teachers, the fellowship uh, from our peers, um, just the involvement of the teachers in our lives, uh, wanting to know uh, how we're doing and um, being involved in the growth as a disciple uh, was very amazing. Um, so discipleship was exactly what we needed in our lives. Yeah, absolutely. I can agree more. Uh, we met some amazing people right off from the bat, from the very first discipleship class for me. And everybody's just been so open. The teachers were we're really focused on each and every one of us on our growth as being a disciple. Hi, I'm Kimberly and I started a discipleship class last year and I would like to say that it's the best experience you could ever have starting new in a church because you get to meet and connect with people 
you feel like family and you I look forward to going there and spending time with people who are like-minded learning about sharing or testimony praying and learning about fasting and different topics that you might not have been introduced to everybody say discipleship and now say life groups all right the first wednesday of each and every month we have triumph life groups all across the city of houston and guess what that is this wednesday so if you are not attending a life group go to the app go to the website there's cards in the back with the qr code join a life group today and be there on wednesday night at seven o'clock we are taking the gospel message house to house amen and as a matter of fact this is the last lesson of the gospel from pastor jason cisco so we are really excited to kind of like put a book end on the gospel message so we've had the death the burial the resurrection so th this wednesday is a lesson on the holy spirit and i know that if you show up to life groups that the power and the presence of God is going to fall. If you bring your neighbor, if you bring your friend, if you bring your loved one, and, and maybe it's been a while, maybe it's been a while for you, go Wednesday night expecting God to show up and for a Acts 2 experience where the Holy Ghost will fall in your house, in your living room. Amen? Amen. Amen. It's going to be exciting. It's going to be exciting. I want to also remind you next Sunday is Join the Family. Join the Family is a reception that we have at the Church Triumphant several times a year. And if you have decided that the Church Triumphant is your home church and you are ready to join the family, well, sign up in the back. You can call. We want to invite you to join the family next Sunday. Sunday. It's usually in the morning, and it will be in the morning before church. So come a little bit early, hear about what's happening at the church triumphant, have a little breakfast, have a little coffee. Everybody say coffee, hallelujah. <laughs> so next Sunday, join the family. If you would stand with me this morning, we're going to allow you an opportunity to not just worship with song and dance, but also worship with our giving. The scripture tells us it is more blessed to give than to receive. And I know that when you come and you say, God, I'm going to put everything in my life first. And that's not just I'm going to put my talents first or give you my time first or, or I'm just going to give you my thoughts first. But when you also say, God, I'm even going to trust you with my money. I'm even going to trust you with tithing. I'm even going to trust you with a special offering to a missionary, God is going to bless you. And we don't just give in order to be blessed, but blessing is a scriptural byproduct of giving. So let me just say thank you so very much for those that give. And I want to challenge you to give. Give what the Lord is talking to you to give. And if you have not uh, figured out how to tithe, well, trust God with that that 10% and let him do the rest in your life. Amen? Amen. Amen. You're able to give here. You're able to give in the back. Uh, you can turn in your connect cards. But let's go to the Lord in prayer and thanking God for his many blessings upon our finance. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you for each and every family that is represented here. Each and every individual, Lord, each and every giver, Lord, man, woman, child, Lord, young lady, young man. Lord, I thank you for their continued giving. Lord, and I pray right now, blessing be upon them. God, I pray favor be upon them. Lord, and I thank you, we ask you to bless the gift and the giver and let it be for the furthering of your kingdom. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Come and give. Greet one another in Jesus' name.
We love you, Jesus. We trust in you, Lord. If there's anyone in this place who's come in need of a healing, if there's anyone in this place who needs an increase of faith or who needs overflowing joy, we ask you to come to the front. It's your day to receive it.
to work these altars right now hallelujah there's many of you here searching for the lord and guess what he's heard you and he never fails you so take your time right now and pour out your heart to the lord right now
the beautiful presence of the Lord that is here. Why don't we give him a big hand, a mighty hand right now that we can make this whole place shake right now with our praise. Can somebody give him a shout? Hallelujah! I think we can do better than that. Why don't we make some noise right now for our Lord Jesus, for our Savior. <laughs> Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. God will continue to move even through the rest of this service. So as you make your way back to your seats, why don't you just give somebody a high five and say welcome to the happiest church in all of the universe. That may be a little long conversation there, but who's having a good time in the house of God? Hallelujah, hallelujah. I am always so blessed and honored to be here with all of you, with my body of Christ, my family. Love each of you so much, even if we haven't really had a time to connect and get to know each other. I love you with the love of Jesus. Amen. I'm sure many of us can agree from where God brought us from, we can only love because he loved us first. We wouldn't know what real love is if it wasn't for Jesus. I absolutely did not know what love was until Jesus let me feel his love first. So you're at the right place here in Pasadena, in 1030 Strawberry Road, whether it was by invitation or by the voice of God, or you just taking a leap of faith, you are at exactly where God wants you to be. Amen. So you can get comfortable just for a moment. I'll talk just for a couple minutes and then we're going to stand back up so you can stretch your arms and legs right now. Get ready. Hallelujah. I know you all came with great expectation for a move of God. And God is going to do incredible things here today. He already has. And he does it every day. But if we come with faith and with great expectation, there is absolutely nothing the Lord can't do. And I'm looking at a body of believers here in this house today. Does anybody have faith in this house? Is anybody ready for God to just take care of some things, to help you let go of some things and give you something new? If you mean it, make some noise for Jesus. I know I came with great expectation. I give honor, of course, to God and to my beautiful family, my bride and my, my baby girls, the one that's on the way, super excited for her. I give honor to my incredible leadership, our pastors, the greatest pastors in the universe, Pastor Jason and Kimberly Cisco. Aren't they just incredible for how much they pour out in our lives, for the time that they take to invest in us? Hallelujah. So I just give honor to, to everyone that's poured into my life, all of my spiritual parents, everybody that's here that has just gone above and beyond to help me grow in the Lord. And I know I still have a lot of growing to do, but I am so blessed and I'm thankful to all of you, especially to God. So now it's time, everybody, for us to stand to our feet. I hope you came ready. <laughs> I know you came ready for God to move. And we're going to go to the book of Exodus chapter 14. For many of you here, I'm sure you're, you're probably noticing right now that God really is speaking to me using the book of Exodus. But there is something incredible that he has really given to, has shown me in the spirit to give to all of you here today. So Exodus 14 verse 29, I'm reading a New King James Version and we're going to have the scriptures for you on the screens behind me. And it says, But the children of Israel had walked on dry land in the midst of the sea. And the waters were a wall to them on their right hand and on their left. So the Lord saved Israel that day out of the hand of the Egyptians. And Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Thus Israel saw the great work which the Lord had done in Egypt. So the people feared the Lord and believed the Lord and his servant Moses. Going into the next chapter, Exodus 15, verse, only verse 1. 
we're not going to read the whole verse just the first sentence it says then Moses and the children of Israel sang this song to the Lord and I'll stop right there let's go to John chapter 4 only three verses verse 19 the woman said to him Jesus sir I perceive that you are a prophet our fathers worshiped on this mountain and you Jews say that in Jerusalem is the place where one ought to worship Jesus said to her woman believe me the hour is coming why don't y'all say that with me the hour is coming when you will neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem worship the Father the message I have for you here today that God's given me in the Holy Ghost the hour is coming the hour is coming so let's prepare our hearts let's prepare our spirits right now to receive what God is about to do next amen let's lift up our hands let's close our eyes and let's praise him right now father in the name of Jesus we love you Lord and we thank you God for being with us even to the end of the world we thank you God that your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path Lord you guide us through your word your word is quick and powerful we couldn't do anything but by your word and in prayer so we thank you God that you've given us all of us access into your word into the scriptures into the truth and into your presence Lord thank you for allowing us to feel your love today and every day we love you God and we pray that you would help us right now that you would open our ears and open our eyes to be able to understand what it is that we're looking and listening to in your word Lord prepare our hearts God our spirits are ready our hearts are ready we're hungry Lord Lord, we're, we need you, Jesus. We know you're going to move. And we thank you for it in advance, believing together in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Why don't we give him another big hand right now? Hallelujah. Give him another shout. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's freedom when you praise him. Hallelujah. Do it again. Hallelujah. 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 You may have your seats. Praise the Lord. Here in Exodus chapter, at the end of 14 and the beginning of chapter 15, what we're looking at is, is the, uh, God had just delivered them by the hand of their enemies, these Egyptians, through the incredible mir miracle of the Red Sea. Waters turned into walls. A way where there seemed to be no way. God cleared a path for them to walk on dry ground across the Red Sea while destroying their enemies behind them as they came in hot pursuit right behind. Bringing that water down upon them. It's been a long hard life for these Hebrews. Born in a world of slavery, hundreds of years of affliction, a life with little or no hope at all. A world of failure, a broken system where all they've ever known is pain and suffering. But now, as God had cleared a path for them, given them a clean slate, here is an opportunity of a lifetime. Freedom, a life without bondage, a life without affliction, a life now with the presence of God more directly involved part of the promise God had given to Abraham had now been completed that judgment on the Egyptians now it was time for another part of his promise to come to pass it was time for these children of Israel to begin their journey to this land that was promised to them a land flowing with milk and honey and they start off right they start off strong what did they do? They start off by singing a song to the Lord, by praising him. Now, I'm not going to try to sing this song to you. I'm going to lose all of you here right now. <laughs> There's a reason I'm not a part of the choir. Trust me. Ask my wife. 
But I'll, I'll mention just a little bit of the song. It's just so beautiful and powerful. The Lord is my strength and song, and he has become my salvation. He is my God, and I will praise him. My Father's God, and I will exalt him. The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. Pharaoh's chariots and his army he has cast into the sea. His chosen captains are also drowned in the Red Sea. Further down in the song, it's beautiful. You in your mercy have led forth your people whom you have redeemed. You have guided them by your strength to your holy habitation. Even Miriam and all the women, they all grab their timbrels and begin to praise God. Everybody is praising him. Everybody's doing exactly what they should be doing. Especially when God's done an incredible miracle. They're praising God until just three days later. Just three days on the other side of the Red Sea. Just three days in the wilderness of Shur. And now they go from praising to complaining. Because they haven't had water to drink. And the water that they found, it was too, too, too bitter to drink. But God, being such a good, good father that he is, he provides for them. By having Moses cut down this tree and throw it into the water. And now the water turns sweet. God just did an incredible miracle for his people. But just a little over a few weeks later, now they're complaining again. This time because they're hungry. But now their complaints and frustration are elevating to another level. These children of Israel are losing their patience. They are losing their minds. Listen to what they say. Oh, that we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt. When we sat by the pots of meat and when we ate bread to the full. They're literally saying we had it better as slaves. We had the pots full of meat. We had all the bread that we wanted to eat. But God once again Instead of just abandoning them for their complaints. Instead of just letting them starve to death. He provides yet again. This time connecting them directly to heaven's supply chain. Giving them bread from heaven. Which they eventually call it manna. Because they didn't know what it was. God provided for his people. Even though they continue to lose faith in him. It's easy for us. To start off strong. To start off right. Especially when God's done an incredible miracle for our lives personally. We can't help but praise God for it. We celebrate. We'll even dance. We'll get so excited wherever we are when he's done that specific miracle. Now we're ready to be bold and courageous. Now we're ready to be holy as he is holy. We're ready to live for God. At least we think we are. Until we're not. When temptation begins to kick in, when our physical bodies begin to feel weak, when it feels like if we haven't had food to eat or water to drink for days, when your carnal mind begins to overwhelm you from all these negative experiences in your past come back into your mind, when it feels like you're in your own personal desert and nothing makes sense around you, when life gets hard, we complain. We'll complain to God. We'll even complain to the people of God around us. Just like they complained to Moses. But God knew all of this was new for them. Having the hand of God on their lives. Seeing the supernatural for the first time in generations. So it was hard for them to truly trust in God. It was hard for them to believe that the Lord really will work all things together for the good of those that love him. So they had just been set free from their enemies, but they haven't been healed in their hearts just yet. There's this pain in their hearts. There's this wound in their souls. Because feeling his love is the first step. We feel loved. We feel noticed. We feel, we feel special when God has done an incredible miracle, knowing that he died for us on the cross. It makes us feel so special, so loved because he did it for me. 
But when we, when all of this is new to us, we don't know how to respond during trying times. People will tell you to have the mind of Christ and walk by faith, not by sight. And all we can say is, what does that even mean? How do you do that? How do you live this way? Because all I know is pain and suffering. All I know is failure. Everything always goes wrong. Even before the Red Sea miracle, as the Egyptians were approaching from a distance, and these children of Israel stood there at the water, and there seemed to be no way out, they were terrified. And they cried out to Moses saying, Oh, that not this what we told you in Egypt? Saying just to leave us alone. It would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. So even before God set them free, even before Moses took them out of Egypt, they had already complained, saying, just leave us alone. Let us live this way for the rest of our lives. This is what we're familiar with. We know this, and you know what? We're okay with, with bare minimum. We would rather just keep living the same way than to take a chance without knowing how it ends. Because of everything they've experienced, everything that they've gone through, it's now caused them to fear. They were afraid that things would only get worse. They were afraid of experiencing a whole new level of pain. God had set them free. Freedom. There was a clean path for them. A clean slate. An opportunity for them to, to live for God. But they had a whole new enemy. Worse than before. Themselves. Some of you here, you feel all alone. You feel like nobody gets it. Like nobody understands your pain. Because of everything that you've gone through in life. Even though God's done an incredible miracle. And he's set you up to live free for him. Now you're afraid. You're afraid that things will only get worse. You're afraid of failure happening once again you're afraid of experiencing what you experienced in your past all over again that things will only fail and fail again you think you don't have faith but your faith is just in the wrong place god is here to getting ready to readjust our faith to point it at the right direction you have a whole new enemy and it's yourself but god is here getting ready to do something about it he didn't punish his people for their doubts or complaints because he knew the root cause of this was fear. That was the purpose for his miracle signs and wonders. It was to build their faith. Here's this miracle, the plagues on the Egyptians. Here's this miracle, the pillar of cloud and the pillar of fire. Here's this miracle, the Red Sea. Here's this miracle, the bitter water turns sweet. God continued to give them these miracles to build their faith. But now he was ready to take it a whole nother level. He was to take, ready to take it one step further because he tells Moses, Behold, I come in a thick cloud that the people may hear when I speak with you and what? And believe you forever. What God was saying is, no longer will this be a private conversation between you and I. No longer will I just manifest my presence in different ways just for you. But now I'm going to bring my presence closer to them where they can see it for themselves. Where they can feel it for themselves. And I'm going to speak so clear where they will hear my voice. And it will give them faith that lasts forever. They will believe you forever. They will know that what you speak, it's not opinionated. But what comes out of your mouth comes from me. And that presence of God came down like a fire. There was thunder. There was lightning. There was this sound of the trumpet that came directly from heaven itself. Moses began to speak to God. And God responded with his voice like thunder. 
When the time has come for us, for you to rise up to that calling of God on your life, for you to be made aware that you're more than just dust of the earth, but that there's this hidden power locked inside you getting ready to be unleashed. God begins by giving us the miracles, by giving you those signs and wonders. And it's his way of building your faith. It's his way by speaking to you in ways like never before, by showing you things you've never seen. All of a sudden, that billboard sign on the road, it's speaking to you. Something about it, it's telling you to go to church. All of a sudden, there's this random stranger walking up to you, talking about the love of Jesus. And now you just can't help it. Better come to church. When that car on the road should have killed you, in that car crash, Brother Jose Martinez, God stepped in and extended your life. When that car was heading directly towards you, Brother Chris and Sister Becca, I don't know if you're here, but when that car was heading directly towards you and you knew there was no way out, you knew there was no survival in this, but God stepped in and sent you an angel. You, when you should have died overdosed on drugs, Brother Tim Hurston, wherever you are, you should have died overdosed. But God stepped in and extended your life. <laughs> When Brother Robert Dominguez had a heart attack and the doctor said survival, it's only 10 to 12 percent. But guess what? He serves a Lord that can do all things. God stepped in and gave him life, made him stronger. And he came back the next week praising God at church. When Brother James St. John, when he had his stroke and the doctors gave all their negative reports, but there was somebody else there speaking life. And Brother James, even though he went through what he went through, God stepped in and extended his life. And he's about to be set free. He's about to go home. When Brother Paul Allen, and we all love Brother Paul Allen, what an incredible, mighty man of God. But at the end of October, his heart died. There was no way for him to come back unless you know the name of Jesus. Unless you serve the God that we serve. And God stepped in and extended his life. He's still alive and he's only getting stronger. And even when we can't help but complain and fear for our lives, instead of the Lord abandoning us for our complaints, he now takes it to another level. One step further, just like he did for them, the presence of God comes down like a fire, thunder and lightning. You hear a sound from heaven, and now you're doing things you've never done before. When you're stuck in the middle of that storm, when there seems to be no way out, Jesus steps in. He steps in just like he did for his disciples. He spoke to them from that storm. He said, be of good cheer. It is I. Do not be afraid. And all of a sudden, Peter was walking on water. He didn't know how he was doing it. He just knew that he heard a voice. It was the voice of God. When we hear his voice, it causes us to act in the supernatural. We're able to do things we never did before. Now we're facing the storm. We're facing our fears. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. His voice causes us to act different. We begin to do things we never did before. We begin to act a little crazy. We begin to jump. We begin to dance. We begin to run the altars. His voice causes us to dress different. We went from wearing sagging pants and big old t-shirts to now wearing suits and ties and, 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 and giving God glory. You went from wearing inappropriate clothing, covered up in makeup, but now you're wearing full-length dresses with no makeup at all. You went from using your house to sell dope and do drugs to now using your house to have Bible studies. You went from gang-banging on the streets to now serving Jesus. All you know 
know is that you heard a voice, a sound from heaven, this voice of God that spoke to you. When Brother James had that stroke and it seemed to be like there was going to be no miracle, no movement, especially on the left side of his body. But Sister Stacy, his precious daughter came, held his hand by the side and she spoke life to him. And he began to move uncontrollably, trying to let her know, I hear you, I hear you. He was shaking uncontrollably, even though he couldn't open his eyes. He wanted to let her know because James heard a voice. That sound from heaven was coming out of Stacy's mouth. He kayabaka. Sister Cassandra, you had that stroke a couple of years ago, and it seems like maybe things aren't changing. Maybe things aren't getting any better, but God's not finished yet, and he's just getting started. Your miracle's coming, sister. Your miracle. Hallelujah. This is the type of God that we serve. You can't make this stuff up. You want to see miracles? Look around you. We can go around the room one by one and talk about the goodness of God. Brother Paul Allen, his heart was completely dead, connected to a heart machine. They said, there's nothing we can do. And they said, well, can we at least keep him connected until his daughter arrives? Can we just hold off on making any hard decisions at least till his precious daughter can get here from school? And when she finally got there and she stood by his side, she must have held on to him. And she whispered in his ear, and you know what she said? Daddy, I'm here. And in that very moment, as soon as she spoke to him, his heart came back to life. There was a heartbeat. This is the God that we serve. And his name is Jesus. When you seem to be at the wrong place at the wrong time, someone else was there, someone else was on time. Jesus is always at the right place at the right time. Jesus is always on time. And when he speaks to you, it will give you faith. Because faith comes by hearing. Hearing by the word of God. He gave Peter the ability to walk on water. Who's ready to walk on water? Who's ready to operate in the supernatural? Who's ready to face your storm? That storm does not control you. That storm does not decide the outcome of your life. But you control the storm. You control the outcome. You control your destiny. We do not operate in the spirit of fear in this place, but here at the church triumphant, we operate in the spirit of power, in the Holy Ghost. Let's bind that spirit of fear right now together. Let's close our eyes and lift up our hands. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, we bind that spirit of fear. Father, we will not operate in fear. We will not be afraid to be who you called us to be. We will not be afraid to preach your word. We will not be afraid to accept who we are in Christ. Father, I release that gift of power, that gift of the Holy Ghost right now upon each of us. That spirit of power, of love, and of a sound mind. If you receive that, give God a hand. His voice causes us to act different. His spirit, his presence causes us to speak different. When that fire that was on that mountain comes upon you, cloven tongues as a fire. When you've been baptized by the Holy Ghost and fire, now all of a sudden tears are dropping down your face. Your body begins to tremble. Now your tongue begins to dance for the Lord. And now you go from speaking English to speaking in a different language. Now that sound from heaven is coming out of your mouth. You now have the voice of God, a voice like thunder. Hikayabakash. Hikayabakash. 
God loved his people. He had a plan for them. He didn't destroy them because he knew all of this, the reason behind it. And so now he's brought them to Mount Sinai, getting ready to change their lives by just revealing that presence to them. And now he's ready to let them know exactly why they were set free. Because there was a purpose for their freedom. Jesus didn't speak to Peter just for him to walk on water. He doesn't speak to us just to give us the ability to operate in his gifts. But he spoke to Peter. You need to listen to this. He spoke to Peter, most importantly, to give him the faith that he needed to approach his presence. God did not speak to the children of Israel from that mountain just for them to stay in their fear. But he spoke to them to give them the faith that they needed to eventually approach his presence there was something the lord was searching for from his people there was something he expected from them in this specific location there was something that god wanted from his people remember what he told moses through the burning bush in exodus chapter 3 before he took the people out of egypt he says certainly i will be with you and this shall be a token unto you that i've sent you when thou hast brought forth the people out of Egypt, ye shall serve God upon this mountain. And then when they go to the king of Egypt, they give the word of the Lord, saying, Thus saith the Lord, God of Israel, let my people go, that what? That they may hold a feast unto me in the wilderness. God gave his people freedom so that they would worship him because to serve is to worship to hold a feast it means to worship because feast literally means a time of dancing a time of celebration so God wanted his people to have freedom to come into his presence and worship him this is what God is searching for. This is what God wants from us as his people. He wants us to worship him. This is what you are made for. And Jesus said himself, the hour is coming. The hour is coming when you will neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem worship the Father. The hour is coming, church. When we no longer have to worship in a specific location. We no longer have to be at a specific time frame. But Jesus continued and said, the hour is coming. And now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For God seeketh such to worship him the hour is now the hour has come church triumphant when we rise up and be the worshipers that god has called us to be that we worship in spirit and in truth because this is the type of worship the lord is searching for are there any worshipers in the house today Praise ye the Lord, Brother Ryan Laughlin. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the timbre and dance. Praise him with the stringed instruments and organs. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. It's at the name of Jesus that every knee should bow of things in heaven, things in earth, and things under the earth. And every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord God did not give us freedom to go back to being slaves he did not speak to you for you to stay on the boat <clears throat> the 
God did not give his life on the cross for us to be slaves to sin. But he gave his life on the cross so that we would have freedom once and for all. To set us free from sin. And now as his children, as his people, we pick up our cross. We are now buried with him in baptism. That just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also shall walk in newness of life. When you're baptized in his name, he gives you a whole new life. You become a whole new creature in Christ. Is there any new creatures in the house today? A bunch of testimonies. Knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with. For he who has died has been set free from sin. When we are baptized in the name of Jesus, he sets us free from sin. He sets us free from being slaves. And now we're servants of God. Knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has dominion over him. When we are baptized in his name, death no longer has a hold of you. Death no longer has anything on you because now we're part of eternity. Now we're part of the family in Christ. So have you been warring in the spirit? Have you been going through a lot lately? Well, get ready because there's a reward waiting for you. We're not doing it for the time that we have in this earth because we know this is temporary. This won't last. But what I'm doing it for, it's for eternity. This is what we're fighting for. This is what it's all about. And if you haven't been baptized in the name of Jesus, it's time for you to be baptized today. If you've been baptized in the titles, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, it's time for you to get revelation of the name. Because Jesus said to baptize them in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. What's the name of the Father? It's Jesus. He who has seen me has seen the Father. What's the name of the Son? Of course, it's Jesus. What's the name of the Holy Ghost? It's Jesus. The spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it doesn't know him or see him. But you know him because he lives with you right now in person. And he shall be in you. It's time for you to be baptized in the only saving name of Jesus. Because there is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. It's time for us to worship the one true God, the King of kings, the Lord of lords. Jesus is his name. Amen. Commandment number one, thou shalt have no other gods before me. It's time to get rid of everything that's holding us back. It's time to let go of all the things that's holding you back from the presence of God. It's time to clean up this house just like Jesus cleansed the temple from all the wrongdoing. He said, the scripture says, don't you know that you are the temple of God and that the spirit of God lives in you. You become his temple. And how can we expect to invite the presence of God in our lives? without cleaning it up first you won't invite someone over to your house before cleaning it up so it's time for us to clean up this house it's time to let go of everything everything that's holding me back from prayer everything that's holding me back from my walk and talking to the Lord let's talk about praise and worship just for a moment there is a difference did you know that we all love to praise God. I think that's easy, especially when God's some, done something fantastic. We can't help but praise him. Perfect example, the opening scriptures. They sang a whole song in praise. And many times we come to church and one of the songs makes you just want to jump and dance, right? We're just praising at his goodness and what God can do. Then you have that one song that just drops you to your knees and you can't help but cry and cry. And we call that worship. But there's more to worship. 
Because worship is a lifestyle. And many times the problem now in churches is that people are excellent praisers while they're in church. <clears throat> but when we come out of the church house, out of the building, it seems like we take off that garment of praise. And we put on a garment of something else. But worship is who you are in and out of church. Who you serve is who you worship. People will know who you worship by the way that you live. By your attitude, by your actions and behavior, by the way that you dress. People will know who you serve by what you allow in your home, what you're listening to on the music, what you're, who you're talking to, who you accompany yourself with, your friends and family members that you hang out with on the weekends and during the week. Because you will eventually become who you worship. He said, no other gods before me. We know there is no other God. There's only one. And his name is Jesus. There's no equal. But what God was referring to here is these false gods. These idols. Everything that's gotten in your way. Whether it's your workplace. Whether it's your friends. It's things that you do behind the scenes. Everything that's holding you back. Because God is searching for the worshipers. It's time for us to break free from all that stuff. It's time for us to wake up in the morning and worship God. Let's not wait till we get to church. But let's worship as soon as we wake up. It's time for us to sing out the name of the Lord Jesus. Say, God, I worship you in the morning. I worship you in the afternoon. I worship you in the evening. I worship you before I go to sleep. This is why God gave us faith through the signs and wonders. To approach his presence. Moses had the faith that he needed. He was allowed at the top of the mountain. The people were not. They were only allowed at the foot of the mountain. They had no faith yet. Moses obeyed God. The people didn't. Moses trusted God. The people didn't. Moses depended on God. The people depended on Moses. It says that when that presence of God came and God spoke the Ten Commandments, the people were terrified. And they tell Moses... Don't let him speak to us. You speak to us. We'll deal with you, Moses. We don't want to talk to God. We don't want to hear him. He's so scary. But Moses, what does he say? Do not be afraid. For the Lord has come to test you. That his fear may be before you. So that you may not sin. Wait, what? So he said, don't be afraid. But be afraid. Do not be afraid, but be afraid. He was talking about two different fears. The fear that they were experiencing was this tormenting, terrorizing fear that is not of God. But the fear Moses was referring to is this fear unto God, later known as the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. The fear of the Lord is a fountain of life. We must live with the fear of the Lord in our hearts. It, the, present, the purpose of the presence of God on that mountain was not to scare them away. They were already at a safe distance. The boundaries were already set. Where they were standing, they were allowed to receive from God in that spot. But his presence scared them further back. It says they stood afar off. They were so afraid. Many times when you're here at church and it's your first time and you're about to receive the Holy Ghost, it's your first time about to receive this presence of God. You're at the altar. Everything seems to be going right and smooth. You're feeling the presence of God for the first time in your life. Tears are dropping down your face. Your body is beginning to tremble. But now all of a sudden, because you've never experienced this before, because you've never felt his presence in this way before, what you usually do or people tend to do now is just step 
back instead of stepping forward instead of stepping into the presence of God and receiving his spirit because I'm here to tell all of you here today whether it's your first time or you've been here for years whether whatever the reason is if you haven't been filled with the Holy Ghost or it's been a long time God is saying do not be afraid I want to fill you with my spirit this is the purpose. God wants to fill us with his spirit. He wants all of us to be filled. And he wants all of us to live with that fear of the Lord. That we respect him and love him like a son loves his father. Like a daughter loves her mother. And having this fear of the Lord, it will also help us to stay away from sin. We no longer want to live wrong anymore. Because that fear of the Lord lives in me. We no longer want to mess up. I know what that's like. But now with the fear of the Lord in my heart, I want to do right. I want to make dad proud. I want to make him happy in heaven. And even when we do mess up, instead of just throwing in the towel and completely giving up, now we rise back up as his people because I'm looking at soldiers of Christ. I'm looking at fighters. I'm looking at warriors. Here, we're not going to throw in the towel. There is no giving up in us. We're only getting started. We pick up our sword again. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of the world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. We are at war, church triumphant. This is spiritual warfare, but we're walking in victory. We pick up our sword. We put on that armor of God every day. We know what it's like to fight. That's why we're here on the winning side because we've been knocked down enough and it's time for us to get on the winning side. It's time for us to get back up and now fight in the name of the Lord. Put on the breastplate of righteousness. Put on the loin girt of truth. Put on the feet shod of the preparation of the gospel of peace. Put on your helmet of salvation. Pick up your shore, your shield, children of God pick up your sword it is not over you come to me with sword and spear and shield but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts is anybody walking in victory today we come in the name of the Lord what's his name there's this burning fire this desire within your heart to make a difference in this world God's going to use it for his glory the people seem to be ready they seem to to have their hearts ready multiple times they'll say we'll do as the Lord commands we'll do everything the Lord says it seems like now they've gotten in the right state of mind and God is ready to take this another step further. Now by bringing that presence that was on that mountain, to bring it right in the center of their lives through the tabernacle. And as Moses goes on the mountain and he begins to receive instructions for this tabernacle, these people weren't ready. They show that their hearts were not in the right place. They failed. Because they command for Aaron to now make them these false gods to come before them. And listen to their words. They say, as for this man Moses, we don't know what's become of him. That's where we get that story that most of us are familiar with of the golden calf. But even before they worshipped this golden calf. They had already given their hearts to someone else other than God. Because listen to what they had said. As for this man Moses, we don't know what's become of him. Moses had unintentionally taken the place in their hearts that only belongs to God. That was not his intention. Moses just wanted to be the go-between for them like a mediator for them, just to help them connect to God. But they completely, completely depended 
on Moses. And because of this, now they went from, from, from waiting on Moses to worshiping an idol. They failed. They weren't ready. And time and time again, it seemed to be a repeat of this story for mankind, the children of God. We continue to fail time and time again. But now God was tired of it. He was tired of all the failures. And instead of just destroying the whole world once again, he was ready to do something about it. God stepped into this world and put matters in his, his own hands. He became the mediator for us. There is one God and one mediator between God and man. The man Christ Jesus. Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Jesus became the mediator for us to help us to connect back to his presence the way it was supposed to be. To help us to learn what it means to worship in spirit and in truth. When he went to the cross, the veil of the temple was torn in two. What separated us from the holiest presence of God has now been torn. So now God has given all of us access to his presence. All of you here can walk out of here transformed by the spirit and power of God. Can we give him a hand for that? You don't have to leave out of here the same way because God came to put matters in his hands. He loves you and he's here to fight these battles for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So why don't we stand to our feet right now? Kayabaka. Let's worship him for a moment right now. Kia, right there where you're at. Thank you, Lord. Let's receive that spirit of the, the, the fear of the Lord right now. Right there where you're at. Raise your hands. Father, right now, in the authority of your word and your name, Jesus, I release that fear of the Lord upon us, Lord, upon your people, right now, God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Receive it right now. Hallelujah, 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 in Jesus' name. Has anything been holding you back lately? Does it feel like there's just something there that doesn't let you worship God wholeheartedly? God is about to remove everything that's been holding us back in our spiritual lives. It's not just something that the pastors do. It's not just something that your leaders do, but you have the ability to do it as well. Before they were pastors, before they were leaders, it started in their own prayer closet. What happened was what they were doing behind the scenes was the real work. The time that they spent in worship. That's where the real work is at. Preaching and teaching is the easy part compared to what happens behind the scenes and I am a testimony of that and no matter how hard it gets I told God I'll still do it again if I knew what the cost was if I knew what I would have to go through if I knew how much of me I would have to get out the way in advance I told God I'll do it again because it's all worth it. <laughs> Living a life for God, it's worth it. I shouldn't even be alive. Many of us shouldn't even be alive right now. So how can we not worship him? You know you're only here because of him. You know you're a miracle. He didn't let you live through that miracle to do nothing with it. He let you live so that now you will use it 
to reach this world, to serve Him. And you think, well, what, what's so fun about that? Get into His presence and you'll find out. Because in His presence, in His presence is fullness of joy. Has anybody experienced the presence of God? Have any of you felt that fullness of joy just flow through your spirit? Well, I'm telling you right now, God wants all of you to have it. He wants all of you to be full of joy in His presence. I tell you what, I have a great time with my family in Christ. We laugh all day if we wanted to. We have an incredible time here at work at the church. I have a great time serving the Lord. And you can too. That's why I smile all the time. You can experience that same smile. Can you imagine walking out of here, everybody just smiling so big. Everybody else is calling us crazy just for that. Smiling so big, it makes somebody sick. Smiling so big, they question us. They question themselves. We can do that. We can do that together. You're, our, you're my family. I love y'all. We can do this together. It's all for him. It's all for Jesus. He's smiling up there. He's smiling, looking at you because he knows what you can do. He knows you can pull through this. He knows you can have that lifestyle. This is what you were made for. And the hour is now. I want to ask first. I don't know if any of you, maybe it's your first time. But before we all come to the altar and pray together, I really want to pray for those that have maybe never been baptized in Jesus' name. If you've been baptized a whole different way but the name of Jesus or haven't been baptized at all, you don't have to come up here, but I would like to invite you to the front of the altar first so we can pray for you. And if you don't want to, like I said, there's no pressure. I'm not telling you you need to be baptized today or there's something that you need to do, but we just want to pray with you. And I also want to ask if you haven't received the Holy Ghost, if you've never been filled with His Spirit, where it just you completely lose control and you speak in a whole different language. I also ask for you to come forward to these altars right now. If you want to be filled with His Spirit, it's an opportunity for you to get to the front. We want you to leave out of here so full where you can't help but smile and to laugh and to have a great time in the presence of God. All right, now for everybody else, if you're ready to just let go of everything that's been holding us back, to destroy all the idols in our lives, let's come forward and let's do this together. I'm going to pray some prayers. We're going to repent first with all our hearts. If you're ready to just accept his name in your life once and for all, wholeheartedly, with nothing holding you back, this is for you. If you're tired of going through the same thing time and time again, it's now time to be set free once and for all. Hallelujah. That's it. Make your way to the altar. Let's close our eyes. Let's lift up our hands and let's, let's pray to God as I pray for you right now. Father, in the name of Jesus. We love you, Lord. We need you, Jesus. And we're so sorry for ever failing you, Lord. We're so sorry for everything we've done wrong, for putting too much attention on the things that don't matter, for putting too much attention on our time and on the people around us and our jobs, Lord. Forgive us for all our sins. Forgive us for ever turning our backs to you, Lord. Forgive us for anything that's been in our mind that doesn't belong, Lord Jesus. Forgive us 
Father, forever cursing your name, Lord, or cursing other people and holding unforgiveness, Lord. Forgive us for our pride. Forgive us for our pride. Oh, Kardabakas. Forgive us for our anger, Lord. Forgive us for everything, Lord. That's it. Lay it all down at his feet. He doesn't want you to carry that right now. Lay it at his feet. I give you everything, Lord. All of my doubts and complaints. All of my fears and everything. Everything that's held me back, Lord, I give it to you. All of my sins. I repent for my sins. And now I'm going to pray for you. And we're going to destroy all the idols together. We're going to destroy everything together in Jesus' name. So when we pray, I want you to begin to either speak it in your mind or even out loud if you want to. And say, God, I destroy this idol. Whatever it is that's getting in your way, it's time for us to destroy it right now. So if you'll believe with me, let's lift up our hands, continue to pray, and let's pray this together. Father, right now, God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, by your strength, Lord, because we cannot do this by ourselves. We can only do this by your strength, Lord. But right now, in the name of Jesus, we destroy destroy all the idols that have been standing in our way we destroy we let go of everything that's been holding us back we let go of the people that need to be let go of even if they're family even if they're friends we let go of every negative voice in our lives lord we let go of everything that's held us back at home we let go father <laughs> We let go of those things, Father. Our, our jobs, it's taking too much of our time. We're ready to change the schedule. We're ready to make a difference, Lord. We don't want to work so hard for the world anymore. We want to work hard for you, Jesus. We want to work for the kingdom. We've given the world too much, Lord. We've given the world way too much. But now we want to give everything that we have left. We want to give it all to you, Jesus. We destroy the music that's hurting our ears. We destroy the shows and, and movies that are hurting our eyes, Lord. <laughs> We destroy the environments that we walk into, Lord. We destroy all these things in the name of Jesus. We only want to be in the environment of your presence. We only want to listen to things that will help us grow in the spirit. We only want to be surrounded by people that will speak faith to us. <laughs> that's it there's this river it's flowing right now the rivers of living water are flowing right now out of your belly and it's time for us to pray that third prayer that now we will not just worship God but we will worship him in spirit and in truth for those that worship Him must worship in spirit and in truth. God is a spirit. So that's it, worshiper. Rise up, worshiper. The hour is now. Lift up your voice, worshiper. You are a worshiper of the Lord Jesus Christ. We worship Him in spirit, with all of our spirit, connecting to His spirit. And in truth, through His word and the truth that's been revealed to us. That's it. 
That's it. Let that spirit flow through you, worshipers. Worship in spirit and in truth. That's it. You're walking out of here transformed. You're walking out of here transformed because we're going to walk out of here. Worshipers. Who's ready to walk out of here? A worshiper. A worshiper in spirit and in truth.
in church, this is what you were made for. You were made to worship. You were made for this. People are being filled with the Holy Ghost. People are being healed right now. And God wants all of you to be filled. He wants all of you to walk out of here completely transformed, to be baptized in His name, and to be filled with His Spirit. Don't leave out of here until absolutely everything's changed. Until you walk out of here in worship. Oh, my God. 